Mahashivratri is a Hindu festival celebrated annually in the honor of Lord Shiva, the god of destruction. Shivratri is celebrated in every month of the Lunisola calendar in accordance with the Hindu calendar, but once a year in late winter, Mahashivratri is celebrated to commemorate the oncoming summer. Mahashivratri literally translates as the great night of Lord Shiva, and according to legends, it is on this night that Lord Shiva performs his heavenly dance or Tandav, representing creation, preservation and destruction. As per many, it is also the day when Shiva and Parvati got married, thus the union of Prakriti and Purusha for the well-being of the world. Devi Sati was the daughter of the great king and the son of Lord Brahma, Prajapati Daksh. Sati, being an incarnation of Shakti, was destined to unite with Shiva for the welfare of the universe. However, Daksha did not want his daughter Sati to marry Shiva, as he considered Shiva to be a dirty ascetic, unworthy of being a god or being married to his daughter from a noble family. Sati, however, disobeyed her father and married Shiva. After her marriage, she moved to her husband's abode, the Kailash Mountains. Once, Prajapati Daksh organized a sacrificial ceremony, also known as a Yagya, and invited all gods and devas to attend his grand Yagya. Due to his hatred towards Shiva, he did not invite both Shiva and his daughter Sati to the Yagya. When Sati came to hear of the Yagya being organized by her father through Narad Muni, she longed to go home and attend it. Upon reaching, she felt deeply saddened to see that no one except her mother Prasuti was delighted to see her, not even her father Daksha. She realized that she was now unwelcomed in her own house. Daksha was furious by her uninvited arrival and humiliated her and mocked Shiva. Daksha began insulting Shiva in front of all his guests and Sati could not bear any insults towards her husband. He created two ferocious creatures, Virabhadra and Bhadrakali, who wrecked mayhem at the sacrificial place. Nearly all those present were felled overnight. Daksha was decapitated by Virabhadra. After the death of his first wife Sati, Shiva withdrew himself from society and engrossed himself in deep meditation. Taking advantage of the situation, the Asura king Tarakasur secured a boon from Lord Brahma that he could only be killed by the son of Shiva. Believing himself effectively immortal, Tarakasur terrorized the beings of the universe and defeated the gods. Meanwhile, Parvati, the reincarnation of Sati, was born to Himavan, the god of the Himalayas, and his wife Mena. When Parvati grew up, sage Nara told her that she was born to marry Shiva, but she would have to follow the path of penance to please Shiva, as he had withdrawn himself from the worldly affairs. Determined to marry Shiva in her new birth as well, Parvati embarked upon an extremely difficult regime of penance and devotion. For thousands of years, she only ate fruits and flowers. Thereafter, for hundreds of years, she ate only fallen leaves, eventually giving up on all food and living on air to survive. In the end, Lord Brahma appeared in front of Parvati and told her that no one in the entire universe had observed or done tapasya or penance the way she did, not even Shiva. He blessed her to soon be married to Lord Shiva and gave her the name Brahmacharini for her immense determination and penance. Ma Brahmacharini is also the second form of Ma Durga celebrated on the second day of Navratri. On the other hand, in desperate need of help from Shiva to have his child who could bring an end to the demon Tarakasur, the god sent Kamadev, the god of love, to disrupt Shiva's meditation. Though Shiva was awakened by Kamadev's arrow, Kamadev was burnt up by Shiva's anger. Implored by the other gods to marry, Shiva agreed but decided to test Parvati's devotion first. Shiva disguised himself as a hermit and reached the place where Parvati was engrossed in her penance. Upon being there, he began criticizing Shiva. He tried to influence Parvati into giving up her tapasya for Shiva, 
who he said was an embodiment of inauspiciousness, who carries skulls in his hand and who lives in a crematorium. Parvati, angry by the comments of the hermit, asks him to leave her alone. Even upon many attempts at changing her mind, Parvati did not get affected. Her unwavering sense of devotion pleased Lord Shiva, and he appeared in his original form and blessed her to be married to him. On the day of the marriage, Shiva reaches King Hemavan's palace in the most terrorizing form along with the strangest marriage procession, also known as Bharat. His body was covered with snakes, smeared in ashes, and his hair was matted with unkempt locks. His marriage procession consisted of ghosts, ascetics, sages, aghoris, etc. Upon seeing the terrorizing form of Lord Shiva, Parvati's mother and other relatives were left in a state of shock. Most of them fainted out of fear and terror. To avoid any embarrassment to her family or to her husband Shiva, Parvati transformed herself into a different form as well. In this form, she was golden, possessed ten arms and was called Chandraghanta. In the form of Chandraghanta, she prayed and persuaded Shiva to take the form of a handsome prince and also turn his marriage procession nobler so the people can see their gentler side and not be fearful of them. Shiva and Parvati got married in their beautiful divine forms and the day of their marriage is celebrated as Mahashivratri every year. Skanda Puran also narrates the story when the divine wedding of Shiva and Parvati took place in the Himalayas, all the living beings on earth headed to north towards the great white mountains to witness the grand wedding. Because of this, earth began losing her balance. So Lord Shiva asked sage Agastya to go to the south to balance the earth's equilibrium. Sage Agastya was pleased with this honor but was also saddened because he would not be able to witness the divine wedding. Perceiving the thoughts in the Rishi's mind, Shiva granted him a boon that he and Parvati would appear before Agastya whenever the latter happened to think of them. Pleased with the boon, sage Agastya began his journey southwards.